Good morning, good morning, good morning, everybody. I am moving one of my charts over here so that we can see it when we go up. Good morning, everybody. It is November 17th. It is Thursday. And if you are lucky enough, one week from today, you will be stuffing your face with turkey and gravy and all different kinds of potatoes and all different kinds of vegetables and going to sleep at halftime during the first football game, waking up at halftime during the second football game, eating again and going back to sleep. And don't forget those poor souls that cook all that food and need to clean up after you. So don't be a pig. Anyway, going into this, we are looking at the 60 minute, the one hour charts over here on the futures and hooray, the NQ finally broke below that 11700 line. That's just below that 283 level, 282, 84 over on the QQQ. And as you can see, coming over here, looking at the RSI, we are already oversold. We're already oversold, but we do have a very big lineup today. And there is something very interesting that I want to bring into your attention. And it again starts to support the reasons why we are due to go higher. I'd like to see a dip better than 39.50, but we might not be able to get it. So I'll show you why. Uh, move this back. Give me a second. Yesterday, yesterday we were looking prior to the open at selling call spreads. We wanted to see the SPX back up there. We wanted to see the SPX back up there into that 4,000 level so that we could sell some call spreads. I threw out that one, that crazy, crazy local, local trade, selling the 4,000s and the 4,005s. Three of you guys private messaged me, told me that you took the trade. Fantastic. Middle of the day, I had to make that adjustment and I had to get over there and go into seeing that, okay, look, we're not going up. We're going down. And as we went down there, I showed that alert there. Put spread, and I'm going to put risk anytime that it's not going to be over on the edges. The edges being the safe zone, which is what I throw out there in the beginning of the mornings. 40.45 is the top edge, 3,900 the bottom edge, 39.51 minus 1%. <clears throat> that put spread, 39.45s, sell the 3,950s, $1.80, $1.70, $1.80, $1.75. They went completely worthless. We made 56% on that trade at $1.80. And again, we are back on this streak here where we're getting 50% every single day, taking these trades that are in the middle of the risk area. And one thing that I do want to show you here before we get going is yesterday, the range on the SPX was only 28.75 points. Very rarely do you see these very small ranges like this. Usually you're going to get at least 50. We've had a 30, 34, 35, had a 35, 36 back to back over there in August when we were hitting that 4,200 level up at resistance. 30 when we were just coming off of that 43.25 August high, had a 25 and had a 25 back in August. So again, it's just a something to point out and one of those reasons why spreads are your baby. Because on a tight day like that, you're doing nothing but making money. You're collecting rent. Buying puts and calls. Risk. Is it worth it? Does it always work out on a day like that when you get tightened up in a range, especially during an OPEX week? Nothing you can do. Algos do what they did. But what we have here is we have four lows right there between 39.45 and 39.55. Four lows right there. So obvious this is what we're looking at as a very strong support level. I'm going to bring you back over here onto what I've seen here. Okay. Now, this is an observation. I am not a candlestick trader. I am not a candlestick pattern follower. But I did see enough people that I have a small amount of respect for that were discussing that high that we put there on Tuesday of being an quote unquote evening star doji. And an evening star doji is a very bearish chart pattern. Again, I am not buying into this, but I am going to bring you over here into some other stuff. And again, this is somebody who I have been following for probably six, seven years. And he pointed this out. He's a futures trader. That's all he does. 
And he pointed this out saying CPCE was up 151.72% in a one day to reading surpassing the 2020 level. And I sat there and I thought to myself, what? So anyway, here's our VIX hovering over here at that resistance level at 2456, but still holding above 2371. Uh, here, CPCE. When you're looking at this and you don't know what you're looking at because you've never looked at it before, you have no idea what you're seeing. So you don't know what you're interpreting. But here is yesterday. Okay. Now we go over here and we look back here on September the 23rd and again here on September the 16th. And we come back and we look at our charts and we say what was on September the 23rd and what was on September the 16th. September the 23rd was a couple of days after the FOMC meeting. Nothing really there. We were up at that 3,800 level. We had just fallen out at 3,900. Makes sense. There was a lot of puts taking place. The other date, let me go back there again and see, because I just forgot because I am getting old. September 16th. So again, go back here on the charts. Look at here. September 16th. September 16th was when we fell out of 3900s after we had fallen off of that 4119 right after that cpi day where we had the big gap down and the big sell down and there was a reading there on that for the cpci or cpce never before new records so i went out here and i'm going to show you so again here is your cpce and what this is telling you okay give you an idea the cpce is a put call ratio it's an indicator that shows the put volume relative to the call volume. Put options, you know what they are. Call options, you know what they are. The put call ratio is above one when put volume exceeds call volume. So what you're looking at here up here at 1.46 yesterday is insane. The rate of change is what this guy's talking about. The rate of change over a one day period jumped 151%, 139% over a two-day period, which is what I'd like to use as a two-day chart. But then again, coming out here, looking at a wider time frame, five years, you can see back here, right after the start of 2020, around May, April, somewhere around there, around March, you had a big setup like this. Back over here at the very end of 2018, when we hit our bottom, again, you had that big, huge spike over here on puts. And what this is telling you, this is telling you what retail traders are doing because that's where your volume is. And again, just like we had this move to the upside that we have, retail is going out here and buying puts. The only way that they can buy puts is because people are selling puts. So again, looks very much like it could be set up for a very strong trap to the downside on these bulls or i'm sorry on the bears i'm going to backtrack into the amazon i took the trade yesterday on the amazon january 20 112 calls closed at two dollars they were up about 10 15 percent during the course of the day and the reason why is i really really like where amazon is from a price point hovering on this 95 pivot which I am expecting it to be a supportive area. And I am looking for this gap to be filled back from the earnings drop off or the CPE drop off, whichever one it was. But I'm looking for this into January to be hovering into that 117 area. 117 is what I'm looking for, me, on this trade. Right up here, right around the October highs, right up there, right at the beginning of October, all up here in this resistance level, right up above that 119, 120 zone. That's what I'm looking for out of that trade. And that was the reason why I picked that strike. I thought the price was cheap, $2, 65 days on the contract. Amazon, you got Black Friday coming. You got Christmas coming. You saw retail sales were good yesterday. I like the trade. Uh, again, here on the SPX, looking at a five-day chart, you see we're hovering right along that minimum level of that 39.50. So again, I don't see a very strong reason or chart set up for anyone to go and be aggressively bearish. But at the same time, I'm being very passive 
about the bullish aspect of it because we are coming into being very close to being very oversold on the shorter time frames. Even on the four hour, we're getting close to being oversold. A good dip today would have us oversold. And then we'd be trending up here, up into that 4064. Maybe filling this gap all the way up to 4110 as we head into December. Optimistic? Absolutely, I am. 4136? Absolutely, I'm looking for 4136. 4155? Absolutely, I'm looking for 4155. This week? Absolutely not. And again, just to shut you down here before you guys get going, the VIX, the VIX, the VIX, the VIX. Five days only I'm looking at here. You can see the VIX is hovering right at resistance. Thursday, we're going into another shortened week next week. We could very easily get that dip that we were looking for, take us down to that SPX 3900 area, maybe even fractionally dip below 3900, and then everybody's going to be oversold and we're heading into the holidays. So have a fantastic Thursday morning. Start doing your stretching now. Don't be a fucking lazy bastard. Start doing your stretching so that you can have that extra little bit of space in your stomach for a week from now when you can eat all that fucking food that's going to be served. Have a great morning. I'll see you in the chat room.